Welcome to Block Less, Smile More. My name is Brett Farley. I'm a web developer at St. Olaf College. Um, and uh, I've been there about three years. This is one of the first major things I did. And uh, I thought I went through so much to get it that I would share it with you. So welcome and here we go. And if I could just click, there we go. Yes, Block Less, Smile More is related to, is inspired by Talk Less, Smile More by uh, the, the words of Aaron Burr. Um, no, this is not a Hamilton presentation entirely. Um, but I thought I'd start with St. Olaf's WordPress setup. So we have a multi-site uh, network around 280 sites. Uh, we have a classic theme developed long ago by Modern Tribe. It had panels. Um, we just got off panels a little while ago. Uh, we moved it to Gutenberg blocks, but panels was supported by a series of plugins uh, as was our theme because they were built into our theme. So there were a theme like core theme and core plugin and, and multiple others. But uh, yeah, we recently migrated all those panels over to ACF blocks. Um, and uh, the funny thing is this uses another plugin. Um, there, there was another, uh, which handles adding Gutenberg blocks to the theme. So um, that said, why, do, why does that matter? Because when we made the switch, uh, St. Olaf was introduced to modern WordPress, Gutenberg blocks, um, and all, all the many things that came with it. Uh, whereas they had previously a dozen panels, they now had hundreds of blocks at their disposal, our, our users, um, and it was overwhelming, uh, a little out of pocket. If you're, I, I heard someone Gen Z say that recently. Um, it's a little out of pocket. So uh, users went from uh, having all of those, uh, from just a few panels to all these blocks. Um, so we wanted control over that. And uh, we, we wanted to um, control third party uh, plug in introduced blocks as well. Um, so yeah, that's that's why we went to this course. By the way, live footage of user scrolling the block <laughs> inserter. Yes. Now, before we get started, uh, there are some existing solutions. Uh, there's, of course, the WordPress uh, user interface. You can go to edit view under preferences uh, to blocks, and you can toggle blocks off. I'll get to why that doesn't work uh, for us. Third-party plugins, there are a couple. I haven't tested them. Um, you're free to, uh, but these are some free ones. Uh, there are some that you can pay uh, through the nose for. Um, and there's the good old approach of just hard coding some lists in your functions.php. Um, and actually there's a great article I've linked it in the, in the slide uh, by Nick Diego written earlier, earlier this year, which is a little late for me, um, but thanks anyway, Nick. Um, still appreciated. So why not just go with one of these? He's like, he's like, what, why not? Um, 3.5 reasons why. The WordPress UI works great for the current user. It doesn't extend to any other users. Um, so we can't use that. Uh, the third party plugins um, uh, that we could get for free maybe work, uh, probably will continue to work for a little while, but we have a very specialized setup as I illustrated before. Um, hard coding and functions, sure. Functions.php works in a pinch. It's pretty mid, as my kids would say. Uh, but mainly, we wanted to know every registered block would be included in our settings, and we either dynamically or manually, um, and we would be able to manage them that way. Uh, so, and I actually, 3.5 used to be like, I don't know, but um, I changed it. Also, it's it's more fun. So, okay, so we're doing this, says Aaron Burr. Okay, 
here's a here's a peek at our block hider plugin. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's you know pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Not a lot of bells and whistles. Uh, it does the job, and uh, you can see there's a lot of blocks there. And you know some of these are hidden blocks. So I'll get to that, but this is essentially what it is. So how are we doing this, and how can you? Uh, four steps. These aren't official steps, but these are the steps we took. Um, we had to understand the different block types. Uh, depending on the kind of block that we want to uh, access and manage, um, they're created and accessed differently in, in WordPress. Uh, two, we have to track them. Um, if we know where their data lives in, in WP, we can control them. We, if we know how WordPress controls them, we can do the same. So three, make them visible. Uh, this just means turn them into options, like tangible options we can manage and toggle. And uh, finally, restrict that control to the network admin because we are on a multi-site and uh, not everything is built for multi-site. So that was one of the biggest challenges actually. Okay, so we know you're a block. What kind of block are you? Yeah, it's pretty good. He's got his laptop, his uh, iPad. Uh, so the blocks we need to consider. Core blocks, obviously. Core block variations. Hidden blocks, which I'll get to, again, probably toward the end, but they're a concern. Um, ACF blocks, because, again, we worked with that vendor to turn all our panels into ACF blocks. Um, and then blocks registered by third-party plugins that we that we activate on our site. Um, which, by the way, sometimes there are many. Uh, Jetpack, I think, includes or introduces 40 blocks of its own into your inserter. Um, and then core block variations, of course, because the embed block, for example, includes 35, 35 different variations. So um, we'll take a look at how we tackled that. Okay, so how can we access them? Um, access is a broad term here, but their core blocks and third-party plugin blocks are registered um, via init server side. Um, and so we have access to them via the registry, uh, the core registry that WordPress provides. Um, hidden blocks are registered uh, via, let, let's see, the registry, but they are hidden using JavaScript logic, so that's not super helpful. Um, client side, uh, we have block variations. Um, those are those are registered and created on the fly with JavaScript. Same with ACF blocks, as far as I can understand. If each I told myself could be housed in separate identities, life would be relieved of all that was unbearable, said Dr. Jekyll. I'm pretty sure he was talking about Gutenberg blocks. In other words, we are at the mercy of Gutenberg blocks' dual nature. Uh, much of our plugins functionality, all of our challenges revolved around this dual nature of PHP and JavaScript, server side, client side. And because of that, things uh, got interesting. So on to the challenge. But let's take a step back. What are we actually trying to do? We're simply trying to curate the list of blocks in the block inserter. So Given that, WordPress actually has an app for that. Actually, it's a filter hook. And that filter hook is allowed block types all. So allowed block types all is simply a hook, uh, a filter. Um, and it, it, okay, a lot of this isn't gonna make a lot of sense right now. So don't worry about that. All you have to know is that there is this filter that we can give a list to an array of blocks and it will say, oh, these are the blocks that are allowed in the inserter. So we'll come back to that. This is one of the last things we'll do actually. You might be wondering where these options came from. You see that uh, we've got a global variable there and get site option is getting an option from our, um, it's get site option because it's the network uh, from our network uh, WordPress database. So. 
Let's back it up. These came from the WordPress database, right where we left them, uh, future us. Um, and we can't talk about how they got there without talking about the settings API. All right. So who has heard of the settings API before? Awesome. OK. Who's used it? Probably the same number of people, roughly. OK, cool. So it's about, um, for, for those online, it's about 50-50. Uh, 30-70. Um, the settings API is the heart and soul of this plugin. Uh, we it lets us do a lot of things. Uh, it, we created settings page, uh, settings section, settings fields, um, and then the fields saved and updated to the database uh, um, were our options. And this is how we'll track and control our blocks visibility. So for those who don't know, the advantages of the settings API, it's a really cool API. Um, it, it does a lot of things, but basically it adds settings pages that you can configure to your own needs. Um, it handles form submissions. It takes your post data, um, handles that. Uh, uh, it includes its own security measures, which is great um, because there's a lot of data flying around. And then it, it helps sanitize that data as well. So. It also has all these special functions, and uh, these functions are for registering parts of the, the settings page that we're creating. Um, a lot of callbacks. Paul, you might appreciate that. Mm -hmm. uh, further, yeah, so uh, callbacks on top of callbacks. So um, summed up, the settings API does a lot of PHP work for us. Um, but rest assured, there's plenty left to do. So how are we going to use it? Um, how did we use it to uh, track and manage our blocks? Um, we pulled a list, for example, of all registered blocks from the block registry, and then we pulled a list of checked or allowed blocks uh, from the database where we put it. Um, these all became our options, and that's what we used to manage and update the settings page, okay? Um, and then changes to those checked blocks, like toggling them on and off, uh, on, uh, resulted in changes in the database upon update. So here's a little graphic. Um, I said, for example, four blocks, because in, this doesn't work for every type of block. But four blocks being in the registry, we were able to pull all currently registered four blocks and some other types. Um, let's see, self-created. Uh, blocks that that that's not what they're called <laughs> um custom blocks uh to create uh to the the settings page and it creates a bunch of check boxes um those are unchecked because we still need to grab the uh list of allowed blocks from the database and give each of those a check mark um and then of course as we interact with it and then update it updates the database so just a visual helper. OK, so how we use the settings API to curate our blocks. This is where it starts to get a little webbed. Uh, from a bird's eye view, we've got some light walkers down there, um, a lot of them. OK, our entry point to this is what I called hideblocksplugin.php. It's not super descriptive. It's just that's what it's called. Um, and basically, what we start with is adding a couple of actions. Uh, one of the actions creates the submenu. The submenu is, of course, our settings page. Um, it's called a submenu because it adds a page to the uh, settings um, in the menu, of course. And then, and this is in the admin. Um, add action, network, admin, edit. This is an interesting one. Um, this is why I have these two slugs at the top, because we use these slugs to access uh, parts of the settings constantly. So um, we, you'll have three or four of these at the top of your file if you decide to do it that way. Um, but dash update triggers an update action uh, down at the bottom. We'll get there. But that's essentially uh, what updates the page. So these are our actions we're starting with. Um, this looks like a, a wall of 
code, but we're checking for options and add them, adding them if they aren't created yet. Uh, our add submenu page has a callback called create page. So we're already starting to create parts of our settings. Um, and we'll take a look at the create page here. So our, this is what I called it, create page. Um, is the function that creates the page, and it has a bunch of other stuff going on in it. But thank you. Basically, it creates a form with an update action. Um, then it creates the section, and uh, it, it bases that on the slugs we created. Um, do settings sections uh, is the function that it provides to us to actually create those. So once we create all our settings, parts, and fields, and uh, register them, it'll say, do settings sections. And then, of course, we have a submit button, and that's what causes things to update. So uh, this is OK. So this is one of the functions it provides. Uh, it has to have a, a section to put your, I think it has to have a section. Um, to put your fields in. So a section is just that part of the page where, you know, it separates this stuff, these fields up here from these fields down here. Um, and I created one for the main blocks and one for the variation blocks, just to kind of keep them separate. Um, and then uh, the blocks fields. So fields, uh, more the more fine tuning, getting into that section and really defining this, the options. Um, and again, one for main blocks and one for variation blocks. Okay, but behold, the field in which I grow my blocks, lay thine eyes upon it and see that it is barren. We need to put blocks in our fields. Um, okay, so you notice this maybe callback function in add in the add settings field. Um, this is what we're going to take a look at next. This is where things start to come together. OK, so we've got this multi-site settings checkbox callback. Um, I named that. Sorry. Uh, it gets site options, first thing, and then puts them in an in array. Um, and then it, it calls something called get all blocks. So this is a function that gets all the main blocks. Um, and we'll take a look at what that does later. Then it uh, uses this callback function to format the checkboxes individually. And then we register it. OK, so uh, in, that, that callback, individual settings checkbox callback, so individual settings, is this is what it does. Um, it does the HTML creation. So we are actually creating those checkboxes. Um, but for us, what we're also doing is we are sending each checkbox block to a, a function that checks to see, uh, it checks it against the allow list um, to see if it gets a checkbox or a, a check mark. So, uh, so once it decides that, it says, oh, okay, I've created this checkbox, it gets a check mark, and then it moves on. So that's, that's all that does. And then we do variations the same way. Um, I won't get into the details on that one. It's basically the same thing, except the get all blocks is get all variation blocks. And it doesn't get blocks from the registry because they're not there. So on that note, let's back it up and take a look at those uh, block getting functions. OK, from a, from a dragon's eye view. <clears throat> All right. So our get all blocks function, again, this is getting all of our main core blocks, our, our uh, custom blocks, things like that. Um, they're all in the registry, so it gets all those. But we also need to give it our ACF blocks. So I created a list of the ACF blocks that, were, that came from our panels. They're not going to change. Um, this was the only way I could figure out how to do this with ACF. If you ever find a better way, let me know, because I could not find it anywhere. Um, but being that it's a pretty solid, unchanging list, I hard-coded it. 
And then I added that to the blocks I got from the registry. And then I put I uh, returned that array. So that's all our, our main blocks. Okay. So this is get all variation blocks. Um, this calls a PHP file uh, via a, a REST API route that I uh, registered in that PHP file. Um, but the PHP file essentially just houses a list. Uh, and it's got, for example, a list of all of our embeds. It can have many lists, and we can return all of them. Um, but again, the reason we're doing this is because these aren't available in the back end. They, you can't see your variations until JavaScript runs its course. So um, we get them early so we can add them to our backend admin settings. Um, I don't need a, a REST API route here uh, to do this, but I do need a, a REST API route later um, when uh, I call, when I enqueue a JavaScript function to uh, do front end stuff, like with the inserter, because it needs a list there too. So as long as I've got it, I just used it. Um, and I put it all into a variable and I return that variable. Okay. So this concludes the setting up of our settings page. Um, I might pause there and see if there's any questions. Okay. A lot of you have seen this stuff before, but some of you haven't, and we're definitely using it in kind of a weird way. So um, that said, there's no other questions. We still need to update our options and the settings API can of course help with that as well. All right. So this is where things differ from single site. Multi-site gets uh, complex. It's not well-documented. Um, I relied on the WP campus Slack channel a little bit for this one. Uh, somebody was like, hey, we've done this. That was the only person I've ever met who's done this. But um, I'm sure there are more out there. They're just not on WP campus. So uh, remember this add action at the top of our main file? It's the weird one with the slug in the middle. Um, we use that slug to uh, to insert into it to uh, to create that update that we point toward the update network setting function. You can see it at the end of that action. Um, and we'll see what that looks like. All right, so here it is. It seems like there's a lot going on. Really, it's just getting our post data from when the form was updated um, for both our allow list blocks and our allow list variations. It's getting all that stuff. And it's um, using an add query arg to create a list of arguments that we can send to WP safe redirect. And this, this redirects us to our settings page. So when we click that, it updates and it doesn't do what it used to do when I hadn't had it set up for multi-site and send us to like the homepage or something. Um, it actually knows what to do with it. So it's super handy. Uh, if nothing else, if you run into stuff, this should get you through it. Okay, we're nearly done. Um, how am I doing on time? Yeah, I'm doing fine. Um, how does this hide our blocks? You might be wondering, we tackle this with a two-pronged approach. So there's the back end, like I said. Um, that filter allowed block types all, uh, takes that array and says, um, these, are, these are the things we're allowing in the front end. Now, from the front end, uh, the blocks API, our block API, I can't remember what it, what it is exactly, but it has, um, ha you guys all know about the block API or show hands. Who's, who's used it? Okay, super handy. Um, doesn't do a lot for us for all that backend stuff, but when we wanna get a quick list of something um, after it's already registered and in the front end, it's great for that. Uh, it does dot unregister block variation. Okay, so we're gonna use that. 
And that's uh, relatively new from what I understand. Uh, I think they, they introduced that maybe a few months ago, maybe six months ago. Uh, hey, let's back it up. Sorry. Um, okay, so remember the thing we said we'd do last? We're gonna do that now. We are adding that, uh, we're adding that array to the filter, um, allowed block types all. And um, and that's it. But now we're on the back end. So uh, our our final main blocks allow list goes to the allowed block types all, which determines. Uh, oh yeah, no, we're already on the on the back end here. So I'm getting ahead of myself. Don't let me do that. Um, <laughs> get site option. Uh, we're getting the final list uh, and then turning it into array because it comes as JSON. Um, and then we're putting it in our filter. So that's the back end. Okay. Now we get to the front end. Uh, the JavaScript fetch API comes in handy here um, because we're going to call that uh, API endpoint um, and we're going to get that list of uh, variation blocks that we set aside. Um, and then we will. Okay, we're going to parse that. So we have this result. We turned it into uh, two objects, um, and then we are going to parse that into our all blocks array um, and our, our, our all embed variations array, I should say, and our allowed embed variations. Um, and then we're going to loop through them. And the, if the block is not found in allowed in the allowed list, it's going to unregister it. And that's all that really does. So in that way, we can keep anything, any embed variations, any other variations we don't want showing from showing. All right. So we've seen part of this. We've got the back end where it's calling the registry and doing all that. That's fine. And then you can see the two-pronged approach for allowing or not allowing uh, blocks into the inserter on the front end. Let's take a final peek. All right. You probably can't see that. All you can see is a mess of options yeah. there. Um, I know you can't see that. Uh, but what I want to call out is the hidden blocks. OK, so I talked about these at the beginning. We've got core comments, but core comments also has comments pagination, comments pagination next. OK, so it's going to grab these. There's no way to separate these out uh, in the admin. Um, they just, they're all blocks. So it grabs all blocks. Uh, what these are, are the smaller hidden blocks that compose the larger blocks. And, you know, not all blocks have these. Uh, list item is an example uh, for the list block. Uh, and they, you know, you can check them on or off. It depends what you want to do with them. You only have to do it once. So they're going to appear. You can check them on. Like I need this block, I probably want all those other blocks, uh, and then it's in the database. So, thank you. We're done, though. That's one less thing to worry about. Okay, King George. All right, thank you, and uh, I'll open up for questions. Yeah. Yeah, um, well, so we're a team of two uh, in web services at St. Olaf. Uh, and actually, that's a really good question, because what we what we like to do is uh, look at what we absolutely need. Um, WordPress does introduce new blocks occasionally, and it and I have to keep on top of that because they will inherently be turned off, but they will appear. Uh, so we'll decide. Okay, how's this? How's this look? We'll do some testing and go from there. But I mean, that's the extent of our governance, honestly. It's uh, I, I think that most of our end users don't actually notice when new blocks are added. So if we don't want it to be a big deal, we don't make it a big deal. Um, but yeah, great question. Yeah. So 
So you are basically controlling that the network level across like up to it. You don't have to like go through the site to see a lot of different blocks or different sites to get it to do the job. Yeah, and and so that brings up a good point which is that uh, when we want to control a block uh, network-wide for a plugin that is introducing its own blocks, say Gravity Forms, uh, that has to be enabled and activated, I think, and activated on the main site of the multi-site. So um, that's something that eluded me for a long time <laughs> because... Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it, I'm sure. And that's why I went over the setup at the beginning, because that's our particular setup. It works great for our particular setup. It might be different for others. Um, so I hope that answers your question. <laughs> yeah. 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 So I have two questions. I can just do one at a time. The first is you, you mentioned something a second ago that I think maybe bears repeating. With your plugin, when new blocks are introduced by Core, mm -hmm. the plugin itself will unregister that block until you physically turn on the checkbox. Is that right? That's that's correct. Yeah. Um, yeah. A giant step for governance right there. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. Um, and I, I keep forgetting uh, that online can't hear me, uh, can't hear the questions. Um, so what he what he was highlighting was the fact that new blocks that are uh, introduced, uh, whether by core or plugins uh, that we activate, are in are initially turned off. Um, and that yeah, that's a big plus uh, because it because it doesn't exist in the database yet. It, once you click it on, it may, it adds it to the list and includes it in the database. But until that point, it doesn't it doesn't exist. So, uh, except as a checkbox. Yep. So the second question that I had concerning the separation of processes between register, like <laughs> removing blocks from the block insert versus removing them from being able to be displayed in the front end, does that allow you to like? I'm imagining if you set up a process where you're removing a block from a block inserter, somebody could go over and grab a code pattern from the library or someplace else and drop it code wise into the page and it would still give you what you did want it to be. Is that the purpose of those two things? Yeah, that's a that's a good point. Uh, you know, what I noticed was that when a pattern, for example, uh, includes a block that has been hidden, uh, it will disappear itself from the menu. Uh, that was a happy accident. I didn't, you know, I didn't code that in, but that's that's what WordPress decides to do with it. Cool. So, yeah. So, if you, so okay, just on headings, if you have a pattern and it uses a block that you've hidden, the pattern itself will be removed from the pattern library that the user sees if yeah, you require the block is disabled. Yes. That's amazing. <laughs> because I was going to ask, what's the interaction with the patterns? Right. Yeah, WordPress. I think WordPress just sees, oh, it, we don't have everything we need for this pattern. We can't possibly show it, so they don't. Yeah. Yeah. So you're running all of this at the network level on the mobile side. Have you had the discussion or considered being able to control that on the mobile level on the network, but then be able to introduce the over on a per site basis, or that there's like, I don't know. That's a great question. In fact, I, okay, so the question is, uh, have we had discussion around uh, allowing um, or, or facilitating hiding and unhiding blocks on the site level, even with the network admin uh, global control? 
uh, we we have not had that discussion. Um, and uh, I think the reason is, well, there's already the UI. So users can hide blocks if they want to. I don't, you know, that's up to them. Um, they can hide blocks for themselves. Uh, and we're just gonna leave it. We're just gonna leave it at that. Yeah. <laughs> it's something maybe, yeah, if we if there's a need, I could see that being something we look into, but I appreciate it. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you so much.